Hi, this is Pastor Mark Miller at Ebenezer Church in Stafford, Virginia, and I am sending out this video email to all of our church members and friends who have the capability of watching email on their computer. Sort of a new experiment we're trying here at Ebenezer to stay in communication with uh, folks uh, who are part of our church family. I first of all want to say thank you to so many of you who not only attended our Christmas Eve worship services, but also gave generously to our Christmas Eve offering. Every year our Christmas Eve offering goes to help support our various mission and outreach projects for the upcoming year. This year we uh, received more than $27,000 uh, to help support missions and outreach. That money is going to be used in the year ahead to help our Child Rescue Center in Sierra Leone, Africa, and to also help support the hospital that we've started there. The money will also be used for various mission trips and mission projects all around uh, America and around the world. In addition to that, some of this money will be put to good use as we help uh, several refugee families uh, settle in our area. Uh, last year we had a couple of families from the Congo region of Africa uh, come and settle here in the Stafford Fredericksburg area and our church is making a, a significant commitment uh, to help get them settled, uh, get them uh, speaking English, uh, get them to be able to find work and get educated. Uh, and so the, the funds that you've provided through our Christmas Eve offering will help us to do that. Thank you so very much for your, for your generosity. In addition to uh, financial news, I also uh, recognize that we're about to come upon the new year. Uh, 2010 is upon us. And I don't know if you've made New Year's resolutions already or New Year's commitments, but uh, let me encourage you to make a commitment, if you haven't already done so, to become a good reader. You know, in my own life, I have found there is great value in reading good books. And I've made my own commitment to try to read for an hour a day. I'm not talking about reading the newspaper or reading a, a magazine. I'm talking about reading good books. And I've made a commitment to do that many years ago and, and I've read a lot of books that have been so helpful to me. I just want to encourage you, if you're looking for a New Year's resolution, that might be a good one. And let me recommend a couple of books that I think would be very, very helpful for you. Uh, you might want to add this to your reading list in 2010 or if uh, you're just making a commitment to become a good reader, Maybe uh, this could be the beginning of your reading for 2010. First book I want to recommend to you is called Forgive and Forget. It's by a guy named Lewis Smedes, and he talks about forgiveness as an act of the will. See, a lot of people think that forgiveness is something you have to feel like doing before you do it. But Dr. Smedes points out that forgiveness is a decision we make, not a feeling we feel. And he helps people who are struggling with bitterness, resentment, emotional hurt that is slow to heal. He, he's very helpful in these areas. And if you have an area in your life where you're struggling to forgive, or if you have a person in your life, you're finding it difficult to forgive uh, that person. Uh, this book could be very, very helpful to you. It's not a very thick book. It's a, it's a fairly easy book to read. Forgive and Forget by Lewis Meads. It's a classic. Every Christian should read this book. Another book I want to recommend to you is called The Bible for Dummies. It's one of those dummy books, I know, but I've got to tell you, The Bible for Dummies is one of the best books about the Bible that I've come across. If you find the Bible to be a difficult book to read and understand, you might want to start here with The Bible for Dummies. The Bible for Dummies explains each book of the Bible, each section of the Bible, who the authors were, what their historical context were, were about, lots of helpful charts and graphs. I'm telling you, if you will make the commitment to read this book, come Christmas of 2010, you'll know more about the Bible than you've ever known before. And your daily Bible reading and your quiet time will be richer or more fulfilling because you'll be able to better understand what you're reading in the Bible. So if you've never read the Bible for Dummies, I encourage you to get a copy and read it you will enjoy it, and it will help you. One last book I want to recommend to you for 2010. It's called Why I Am a Christian. And it's uh, edited by a guy named uh, Norman Geisler, but it's written by several leading thinkers, philosophers, uh, 
well-educated uh, individuals who are thoughtful Christians. This book is really helpful to those who maybe wonder, uh, is there a logical, philosophical basis for Christianity? Uh, or if you find yourself sometimes in discussions with people who ask you, why are you a Christian? Why do you believe the Bible? Why do you believe in God? Uh, this book helps answer those kinds of questions in ways that are very, very helpful. Maybe you're struggling to believe, and maybe you're wondering, is Christianity really true? This book can help you in your journey to find the answers to those kinds of very important questions. Friends, let me, let me be very frank. Knowing what we believe and why we believe it is absolutely essential, especially in the times in which we live. So if you're struggling with that, if you want a little help, I would encourage you to pick up a copy of Why I Am a Christian. Now, it's a, it's a more of a challenging read than, than some other books might be, but it's worth the work. And I'm convinced if you'll read that book and meditate upon it, wrestle with it, dialogue with it, at the end of reading that book, your faith will be deeper and richer. And you'll not only know what Christians believe, but why we believe it. One last thing I'd like to mention, uh, we're coming up on New Year's Eve, and uh, I wish everyone a very safe and blessed New Year's. On uh, Saturday, January the 2nd, I'll be leaving the country for about a week. I am going to Cuba on a mission trip. Yes, that's right, Cuba. And no, I can't bring back any cigars, sorry. Uh, but I'm going with a, with a group of United Methodist pastors and uh, uh, some folks to to look at the Cuban Methodist Church, to uh, see how it is growing there and what they're doing there. Going to get to meet some uh, very uh, devout and heartfelt uh, Christians who are uh, leading the churches there, pastors who are doing great work there. Uh, I'll be back on January the 9th, and I look forward to seeing you in worship then. Pastor Chris is all set to handle the worship services and Holy Communion this weekend. But... Uh, I tell you I'm going on this mission trip because I would like to ask for you to, to pray for safe travel for me and that uh, uh, God will bless the time that I spend in Cuba. And I look forward to seeing you, seeing you when I get back. Take care.